Born in 1943, Robert De Niro is a Hollywood legend. Famously a student of Stella Adler and the method technique of acting, there are plenty of stories about just how far he'll go to get the character right. Whether it's wearing silk underwear so he can get the stroll of Al Capone right in The Untouchables, putting on close to 30 kilos for Raging Bull, or grinding his teeth for Cape Fear, De Niro works closely with his director, but only up to a certain point. I always enlist the help of a director in terms of what I would wear or anything. You, you, I, I like the input of a director, but there's a point where they have to leave you alone, and that's a, a, a common, like I say, common sense thing that they know, that they would know and say, okay, now, you know, you're on your own, you're doing a scene, you don't want the, the director telling you how to do it. They'll see how you do it. He certainly likes to explore things and He's not afraid to do it over and over and over and over again. But he obviously is trying to achieve some kind of subtlety that also has nuance. Well, he's just a, uh, you know, remarkable intensity, talent, intelligence, and, um, you know, the, his presence and his intensity on screen are, are, you know, unparalleled. You see the stuff that he can do on screen, and you look at that, and you marvel at his, his ability, you know. He's just gifted. Hey, Clay, how you doing? You know, uh -huh. Extraordinary man. De Niro's ability to get into character and stay in character has intimidated journalists and co-stars alike. On set, he's a presence to be reckoned with. You can have good relationships with certain people and not see them very often, though when you see them, you're happy to see them. And there are other people that you sort of continue the relationship after the, the movie is done. And, you, you know, there's an always saying in, in movies that people, you know, we, we're all so close now and then we all go away and we forget about each other. And that's partially true, you know, a lot of times. In the credits, he's Robert. But to friends and castmates, he's Bob or Bobby. He's earned the respect and admiration of his peers through his talent and hard work. But best of all, he doesn't take himself too seriously. Well, I always have trouble containing myself because I love working with Bob. And every time I act with him, I always have this great feeling of, oh man, look at that, there he is. Life is too short, it's, it's too difficult to make a movie and you, and, and, uh, you just, you have to support everybody else. You can't be, uh, you know, it's uh, the crew, every, everybody on the crew supports each other. They support from, to the director, to the actors, everybody, everybody sort of covers for everyone else. That's the way I look at it. De Niro has been Oscar nominated six times and won twice. First for Best Actor in a Supporting Role for The Godfather Part II, and again for Best Actor in a Leading Role for Raging Bull. But he's not just an actor, director and producer, he owns hotels and restaurants too. It's sort of a hobby, but I wanted to have it have a place in this film centre, a restaurant, uh, and uh, make it sort of a complete little uh, situation in itself. I thought I'd do this at least once in my life and uh, to have a place that was not just a, a flash in the pan and trendy for a year, but a place that has substance and that quality and the, the, the older it gets, the more, the more uh, of a, um, uh, the more qualitative it is. It's like, uh, you know, tradition. A lover of observation as an acting technique, growing up in Manhattan gave De Niro the opportunity to witness firsthand the types of characters he'd grow up to play so well. There is that, that element, it's like any, anything uh, in the streets today, you know, kids who are, they, they look up to a, a drug dealer because a drug dealer is the, is the most powerful, successful person on the block. And uh, it seems like the easiest, most uh, accessible way to get uh, money, power, attention, whatever. So it's, it was the same thing in that situation with people be around who, who you would look at and aspire to. But there are also other people in other professions uh, uh, who you could aspire to being like a priest, like I guess Marty might have said that, or, or whatever, you know, doctor, lawyer, whatever. The depths to which De Niro lets himself get into character means that at times he has to put a hold on his regular life. I do work hard and long, so I mean, I, you know, I have to sacrifice other things, but as far as working the parts that I do between each one, there's enough time for me to do what I know I have to do and then not worry about the things that are, that are really not important that I might have worried about 10 or 15 years ago. De Niro often approaches a character through their physicality. Whether it be through a tick, their gait, or their build, it helps him get into character. In Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, he wasn't sure about the makeup choices others had made. I didn't know whether the prosthetics, how well that would work, and I still don't know how 
people. It affects people. I mean, the, the, the main thing, you know, you have to suspend your belief, and and as long as the makeup was not interfering with the belief, I mean, you could, it could, people could look at it after the fi first five or ten minutes, accept it, and go on with the story. Then that's okay. Um, uh, if it got, it gets in the way, and people are constantly reminded that they don't believe it, then it's uh, don't accept it, then then it's a problem. Having made a name for himself as an actor who could be deep and volatile. In 1999, he changed course, playing opposite Billy Crystal in a much lighter gangster movie, Analyze This. We have a lot of fun. Harold's very good that way, and then we, and we get what we need, and then if you can have laughs during the way, boy, how many people go to work and don't laugh at any point during their day? This is our work, and we get to act together and laugh together, and then it's, it's, it's great. He's really, really good. He's really, really incredible. In, in, in drama, but I, you know, I think one of my favorite comedies of all time was Midnight Run. He's super funny. His comedic timing, timing is extraordinary. I'd love to see him do you know, some more comedy. Then came the sequel, Analyze That, which left some critics believing that De Niro was more interested in the paycheck than the finished product. Cashing is something we didn't want to do, even though you know, we wanted to make it good. I wanted to make it as, you know, and then be respectful of the first movie and then, and even better and funnier. And that's what we tried for. And, and it seems to be working that way. And if it works too well, he's got a solution to the problem. You know, I do a lot of antidepressants. It's better, you know, passed around the, the crew and the, uh, yeah. the actors. Just so, keep them a little keep docile everybody, uh, sometimes. Keep everybody feeling happier. Well. Robert De Niro is a living legend. He's an actor actors look up to, and his opinion counts. But I do like to contribute in that way, uh, and, and uh, usually people are curious about what I think. And, um, and some parts, I, you know, some, if I'm playing a part, there's some people that are play, interacting with me, then I, it's never written in a contract, but I say, you know, it's important that the interaction is correct, it's right, because if you have the wrong person playing it, then it's not gonna work. So, and any director, any smart director knows, without saying it, let's try and make it work. So maybe you read with people, or you make sure it's going to work between those people, and that if that, that I'm, you know, that I'm okay with it. And so I mean, and that's how I would do it as a director. And as a director, he's had success, notably with A Bronx Tale and The Good Shepherd, in which he both starred and directed. It's hard to direct yourself. I'm not crazy about it. If I, if I have to, I will, but. It's, you know. It's more fun to either do one or the other. But I have him, you know, be there to, um, to, to give us all direction is, you know, you, you, you feel like you're in pretty good hands. I like to give advice to people, and I like to get advice from people who've been where I haven't been yet. Save time. Try and avoid mistakes. Although Robert De Niro is a very experienced actor, the movie business certainly isn't easy. You may have the runs on the board, but that doesn't mean you automatically have everyone's support. Not that it doesn't happen in other businesses. Exactly. Uh, in Orbit, there's an anxiety about uh, whether you can deliver, whether you can get another movie made, whether you can get the actor. Sometimes it's hinging on one actor. Uh, and like in my case, that's happened m many times. They're waiting on me to make a decision uh, to go or not. Yes, that's true. Um, and, uh, and my, action, my experience in, in directing like uh, The Good Shepherd um, and uh, Bronx Tale is uh, a lot of, uh, it gave me more preparation for this film because uh, there's a lot of anxiety provoking situations uh, as a director, producer, whatever. Some things are more painful, they're just hard to do. You have, you have your partner to work off of and with, but as in life, it's just what it is, so there's no, real gratification. Pay, the, the payback is when you see it all put together and you see an audience reacting to it. More recently, he's played a pirate in the fantasy adventure Stardust and starred in the comedy What Just Happened, a film that parodies the movie business with a script that uses rhythms found in theatre. There was so much built-in experience in relation to, to the part and so on that uh, I, 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 one of the things that I was concerned about is the rhythm in which Art uh, had written the, the script uh, because it was, uh, uh, he has a great sense of timing and sense of uh, comedy um, and I w was just concerned that that could be, that I would be able to honor that rhythm. I, li I, I liken it to David Mamet who has a very specific way of writing and you have to get that rhythm uh, or you won't get you can't like 
not you got to know what you're doing, got to know what you're saying, you've got to have the, the lines down. His ability to play violent, borderline psychotic characters means that over the years he's delivered some of the greatest tough guys. On top of that, he's created work in most genres as well as producing and directing. What we don't know a lot about is his personal life because he's fiercely private. But what we do know is that his body of work on screen speaks for itself. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.